Okay, so we're now recording, so I just want to repeat uh, my thanks to everybody who has taken part in this, both as a participant and as a viewer, whether it's been live or on YouTube afterwards. We've had some great uh, talks from people with their, you know, I've tried to include people of all levels and all um, different genres, so we get a very varied presentation. Uh, what I did first of all was select a minimum of one from each person, uh, excluding myself. And most people got two selected and maybe two or three people might have got three selected. And then, uh, I, and that I think gave me a hundred images. I then whittled those down to 25. So it was quite an achievement to get into the top 25. Now trying to whittle those top 25 down to uh, a top 10 was almost an impossible task, but I have done my, my best because Rod, I'm going to send Rod those 10 images for publication in E! News. So well done to those people who have got an image into the top 10. I did only select one image uh, from each person in the top 25 and in the top 10. So they're in alphabetical order here. The first one is Abandoned by Sue Sibley. Um, I always use the mantra black and white. The clue is in the title, black and white. This goes against that. This is very much sort of shades of grey, uh, but it's an example of why it can be good to, uh, um, you know, to, to, to break the rules and not always go for, you don't always have to have that sort of painted Guinness, dark black and creamy whites, etc. But this one is made by the whole mood, you know, the, the foggy, uh, background and the fact that there are you know these three main trees the odd numbers always work but there's just a fabulous um, atmosphere to this one by Sue Sibley. Second one up is by David Sadler it's called After School Club um, it is what you would call typical David Sadler uh, processing uh, David uh, has his own style and he's going to stick with it and fair play to him for that um, I mean, what strikes me about this one is the multicolors. There are there's every color under the sun uh, in that picture. Not only in the kids and their co very colorful outfits, but in the in the streets. You know, all the, the all the the, uh, the street behind is all the colors of the the rainbow as well. Um, I would be tempted to crop down there to take the guy in the motorbike out, but he is adding to it, I suppose, with his expression. He's as happy to be in the picture as all these, these kids. So uh, uh, well done, David. This one is called Amethyst by um, Amethyst Deceiver by Bill Parr from, um, from Cork. And uh, it's so three-dimensional. Uh, you know, a lot of people would think that he has used flash in this, but in fact, Bill doesn't use flash at all for these. Uh, they're all, he uses, you know, little reflectors, etc. But how three-dimensional has he made that uh, delicate little um, uh, mushroom growing there in the, uh, amongst those little ferns and the fabulous out-of-focus background. So the more three-dimensional you can make your pictures, uh, the better. But that was, I remember that one being in his... Uh, fellowship panel in the Irish Photographic Federation um, of these uh, uh, mushrooms. Fabulous. Next one is Apparition by Yuli Vasilev uh, from Bulgaria. Um, this one was in his, his club, won the FIAP World Cup and he came over to Belfast this time last year for the presentation and this was one of the prints from the winning uh, entry that was up on display um, in the Titanic Hotel. Um, I just, I love this, um, you know, your eye sweeps around this bend and then you've got this ghost-like figure which gives it the title, obviously, the, the, uh, the apparition. Aspen Grove by Chris Palmer. Uh, I mean, Chris is very good at this type of thing. This is a typical Chris, Chris Palmer picture for me. Um, simple and yet whenever I go out into a, a forest like this and try and take something similar it just doesn't seem to work but again fabulous you know here's the uh, the lit side of these trees here's the shadow side um, so lovely soft diffuse lighting on the um, 
uh, on the tree trunks and then of course you have the splash of yellow uh, in the background and here as well there's a great depth to the whole thing so uh, a really good example of that type of picture wow super portrait by uh, paul reedy who's a member of blarney camera club along with bill parr down there in, in cork southwest of ireland uh, autumn crown um, you know, it's a really strong autumnal colours here. Great life in the eyes, catch lights in the eyes. Uh, beautiful face on the model, and of course the red hair with the autumn colours just works so well. This one uh, I hadn't seen before, and Tim tells me that it's not been entered in any competitions. Um, I suspect that it would do very well in competition. It's called uh, Benegal Beauty. Um, I wasn't sure whether that was the right title or not, but if you Google Benegal Cave, um, it's a cave in Portugal. But there's a super diagonal aspect to this, so it's like an implied diagonal, just following that line there. And I think the model's pose, you know, really suits this environment. Um, she's standing very sort of tall, statuesque, strong and proud. And the colour play here with the blue and orange works so well. I just think that one is absolutely fabulous. And uh, if it was mine, Tim, it would be certainly out there in, in competition. Bent by Work by Rod Whelans. Uh, again, look at this superb diagonal aspect to it. I mean, that diagonal just goes right up through it there. Um, and it's, you know, your, your, the verticals are vertical, so it's a true diagonal in the sense that that is obviously uphill. But the fact that this man is, is uh, framed against the donkey, I think, helps the hump on the back stand out. If the donkey was somewhere else, you know, behind him or in front of him, maybe his, the hump would be lost against these... Um, you know, this uh, pebbled cobblestone street. But, you know, look at, the, the, you know, th this is such a strong storytelling environmental portrait. The old man with his donkey, and you sort of get the sense that he has a fair bit of respect for this donkey, he cares for it. He's bent over on the poor donkey, you know, with, it, with the uh, marks on the coat, etc. Um, but and him with his, with his cane. I think it's just a, a, a fabulous uh, environmental portrait. Berlin by Paul Hanley. I went to this building myself a couple of years ago when I was in Berlin for in early January. And um, unfortunately, it was quite a bright day with all sorts of hard shadows coming down over this building. But a sense of scale here, look at all these little people up here with the, uh, you know, the some sort of conference going on <clears throat> and these people. And Paul described how this was, and, you know, it wasn't a composite. These people actually did walk in uh, from each end of the frame. So you've got great symmetry in the uh, composition, very careful square composition there. And of course, the symmetry of the whole um, pattern, if you like, is matched by the symmetry of these people walking in from the bottom edges. Brexit, well-known image, um, titled, I think, by a guy, uh, Neil Dorman, gave it its title on the internet, on the Facebook page for Catsight Camera Club. And um, previously, I think it was called Look Out Below or something, but it just took off with the name Brexit. Probably an example that, you know, the title of an image can help it. So whenever you get Brexit and you see the red, white, and blue and the guy in the pinstripe suit, the businessman jumping out of the uh, Brexit plane um, without his parachute, etc., cetera, um, I think Brexit really has, has made that um, uh, almost as much as the picture itself has. One by Gerald, <coughs> Gerald Griffin, uh, another Brexit one, Brexit Revenge. So, you know, you've got this nun here representing Europe uh, with the guns loaded, ready to fire. And here is Britain with the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the size of the uh, Grim Reaper, etc. Um, so that, again, this is a fairly new image. It hasn't been entered in anything before. But um, another example of Gerald's mind uh, working full time. Another one by uh, Rod Whelan's Brothers Now and Then. Um, you know, two great characters. And the, let me just move this a second. It's 
stopping me from seeing part of the picture. I hope that doesn't interfere with the recording when I move that. Um, so you've got the picture on the wall, obviously representing these two guys um, in uh, earlier years. Um, you know, the, this guy on the, on the right uh, with his moustache, on this moustache here, etc. The cap is uh, mirrored as well. I think, you know, two, two great characters, well composed and connected. I think if that picture wasn't on the wall, they might look sort of disconnected, but this really helps make the connection between the, uh, the, the, the two characters. Uh, Brown Eyes by Angela Cunning in uh, Northern Ireland here. Unfortunately, Angela wasn't able to connect uh, and tell us about her pictures, but I just thought this was a fabulous child portrait here. Look at the eyes. I mean, the eyes are just alive, totally alive, taken outside. You can see the catch lights from the, uh, uh, the sky in the, in the eye and a, a, a nice open aperture. Uh, to allow the background to go out of focus. And of course the square crop works so well for that uh, type of picture. Butterfly Rescue by Gerald Gribben. So uh, he's not only a uh, super uh, model, he's a good photographer as well. This was in our club entry um, in the print championships and also in the Irish club championships. Did really well in both. I think it was a medal winner in the Irish and scored 15 in the print championships uh, at Blackburn. But uh, Butterfly Rescue, really good play on you know um, the colours, the uh, what I'd call the Wimbledon colours, purple and green, and um, these butterflies obviously lifting Christine off, uh, rescuing her. Catfish by uh, Lynn Morris. <laughs> you know, it's uh, you just can't help but laugh when this comes up. Um, this did well, I think, in um, Southport. Whenever Ricky O'Neill and Terry Donnelly and I were judging it um, at the start of the year, um, I think it's really well um, created. The these big eyes obviously are not the eyes of the fish; they're meant to be the eyes of the cat. So they've been enlarged and obviously put in the right place to represent the eyes of the cat. But this sort of smile um, from the the cat works really well. Um, really well created with these little sort of wispy hairs coming out of the sides of the paws, etc. But super tidal um, catfish. Child Snatchers, second one by Sue Sibley. Again, you know, well composed, well created. The fact that this, you know, there's separation between this uh, very sinister character whose nose has been Pinocchioed um, and uh, these these kids ready to be snatched by the child snatcher. I, I'm not sure, I think that was the Black Country Museum in uh, Smedic, from what I remember uh, with Sue. Really well known image, um, Circle of Beauty by Tim Pyle. Uh, this is Ivory Flame, Holly, uh, positioned on the rock. I think this one won a record number of FIAP gold medals in like a fortnight. Um, it was just, uh, you know, it went literally um, mad in terms of winning medals. But there's a perfect positioning of the model there in that. Uh, on the rock, on the, the, the curve of the body, matching the sort of the curve of the, the rock there. Um, and uh, this was one, I think, of three of Tim's that I've put into this initial selection. Bernard Garrity, Klein. You know, I love the astro aspect to this. So you've got obviously the high viewpoint looking down and your eye just follows this path down to the climber with his um, light torch on his head, lighting up the uh, uh, the path for him to come up. And I think Bernard probably paid him to wear the red jacket. But you know the whole blue, the fact that the snow is also blue, the sky is blue. You've got this uh, great colours, pastly colours in the uh, horizon, and the astro in the sky. I think it's just a super capture. I think this one was printed. Uh, at the photography show last year, if, uh, if I remember rightly. This one is called Cloud Angels, and it's by John McNairn from Dundee. And uh, I just loved it. Um, you know, it's so delicate. Um, You'll be very glad to hear that uh, I, I am so going to do this after the lockdown. 
and Andrea Hargreaves and Sue Sibley have agreed to pose for me uh, to recreate it. So thanks to them. Um, but this, you know, I, I think he said it was filling for uh, a settee. <laughs> it is basically what the models are draped in. But he's obviously, again, reduced the contrast, um, made it very soft, etc. But I, I would love to see that one as a print on a, on a textured paper. Second one by Angela Cunning from Balamoney here in Northern Ireland. Um, Angela doesn't enter um, exhibitions or competitions at all. And uh, this one, believe it or not, was, um, I mean, to me, this is a medal winner. Um, and uh, I told Angela that, and apparently in her club, one of the local Northern Ireland um, selectors uh, didn't select it to represent her club. And um, she sort of, you know, has, has stopped entering competition. I mean, if how a selector could go to, you know, borrow money and not select an image like that to represent the club in me, but is beyond me. Uh, you know, the, the fabulous, uh, this cape, you know, blowing in the wind, the hair blowing in the wind there, this girl playing the harp, um, the beautiful colours, the autumnal background, uh, the light on her face. I mean, it has just so much going for it. Uh, and obviously the emerald green, it's just, you know, it's a lovely Celtic feel to the whole image. Um, I forget, I think it's just called Colleen, but I think that we could maybe come up with a more Celtic uh, sounding title for it, if, if we can persuade Angela to actually enter that one into competition. One by Stephen Hermida from uh, Gibraltar Photographic Society, uh, I think it's called Cormorant. Um, I mean, this we're starting to see more and more of these pictures with obviously people traveling um, to China or wherever this is to, to get these. And I think these guys possibly make more money from uh, coming in for the ph photographic sessions rather than actually catching fish or whatever they're supposed to be doing. But I mean, what a background. Um, and, you know, these long um, rafts with the poles and the cormorants and the lamps, etc. I mean, it's just a photographer's absolute dream. <clears throat> so really strong um, picture there from, uh, from Stephen. One by Romain Nero, uh, who is one of the nine FIAP directors. <clears throat> Romain is from Luxembourg. This is obviously taken in Cuba, uh, but again, there's a great triangular aspect to this composition. You know, you've just got that triangle going there with the dog, the car, and the man. Uh, nothing else really going on in the street. Good control of the highlights in the background here. You can see that this area is, is brighter than this, so it's well controlled uh, overall exposure. But uh, a nice um, uh, example of, uh, most, most Cuba street pictures that you see are in color because obviously the colors are the, the colors of the cars are always something and the colors of the streets, etc. But I think black and white uh, was a very good choice for this one. Diving Gannets by David Keep, who's a member of Rolls Royce. I mean, this one is just so unique in every way. Um, how many of us, probably none of us apart from David, have actually been underwater with um, a camera to be able to take this. And I was quite struck by him saying, you know, the deafening sound of these gannets, you know, literally hurtling into the, into the sea to catch the fish. I can just imagine. Um, and with those beaks coming in, I imagine that you are uh, at a, a certain amount of risk with these, but you know, how, how could you, I mean, this is, there's obviously a certain amount of luck involved, but the fact that they're coming in here from both sides, the two gallets fighting over the one fish and this other gallet coming in uh, to join the party. I mean, it's just fabulous. It's just so different from anything I've, I've seen before. Um, and it's not just the fact that it's so different that makes it score well in competition. I think it was probably the highest scoring image in the FIAP uh, World Cup this year, and it was the top print in the um, print championships, I think, in the colour print section, uh, and rightly so. But it's just, um, you know, it's as much about the content and the composition as it is about the fact that it's so unique. 
Don't Fear the Reaper by Dean Irvine from Catch Like Camera Club. Dean is yeah, preparing an A panel of, you know, he does the, he likes this sort of um, uh, cosplay comic style uh, picture. Uh, but this one is, is one of the pictures that was done really well for him in, in competition, obviously based on the idea of the, the odd person out this you know girl here with the uh, fabulous red hair and all that surrounded by the, uh, the 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 grim reapers second one by yuli vasilia uh, elevated this one was taken in belfast whenever he was over for the fiat world cup presentation and uh, it's in victoria center car park or it's a center car park victoria center shopping center which is a good underground car park that I've used in many a picture. But um, there's a, this is a glass walkway, obviously, and he stood below it and waited for people to come along. But again, the, the fact that I think there's five footsteps almost throws you because you expect to see an even number of uh, footsteps. So where is this person's other foot gone? I don't know, but I think it works really well. It's obviously a graphic image, not all about the pattern, etc., but really well seen. Landscape. So landscape photography tends to get a, you know, a lot of landscape photographers think they get a rough ride in competition. But if your landscapes are good enough, they, you know, they should do as well as any other genre. And, you know, I hate to say it, but very often the problem is that the landscapes are not good enough that you see in, uh, in competitions. But uh, I mean, I think this is an example of a really strong landscape from Colin Ross. Uh, in Castle Camera Club, this is Elgo um, in, on Sky, but all these multicolored rocks, etc., and your eye just comes down this line, obviously towards the uh, mountain range. There are great pastel colors uh, in the sky. It certainly didn't look like that whenever I was there in January of this year. It was absolutely lashing. Family Group by Laurie Campbell. Um, again, a fairly well-known image works probably better as a print than it does as a PDI. Um, you know, textured images tend to work so well on the on a fine art textured paper. Um, and they just seem to lose that little bit of something as a digital image. It's still a cracking image as a as a PDI, but to be appreciated to its fullest, it really needs to be seen uh, as a print on textured fine art paper. Second one by Laurie Campbell. This one is uh, Flamingo Stroll. Uh, and again, look at the fabulous textures that are in this. So you can imagine this as a print. It did well for Cat's Light in the local uh, Northern Ireland competition this year. and uh, Would have represented us in the Irish club championships uh, had they not been cancelled during the lockdown, etc. But I've seen it as a print, a uh, beautiful print on uh, textured fine art paper. Um, and you know, Laurie's so good at these. Um, I mean, there are quite a few female photographers, funny enough, um, who are doing this sort of thing, and uh, they're doing it really well. So, we maybe need to catch up in that regard. Joan Blee's um, this one is called Fly Away Home. Um, again, super use of textures in the background. Nice desaturated colours, etc. Um, figure in the centre, um, and of course that works. By and large, I always say dead centre is dead composition, but it works particularly with a square crop like this. I don't think it's exactly square, but it's getting close to square. But uh, for me, certainly it works. I think Joan um, surprised me by telling me that this model wasn't even actually wearing this dress. The, the dress was photographed on a mannequin somewhere in a museum or something. But uh, uh, you can, you know, it's another example of the skills out there in terms of uh, uh, the Photoshop users. Speaking of, uh, Andrea Hargreaves, the, um, uh, what was the title? Freya, first of the Valkyrie. Um, I mean, it's just fabulous. The colours in this, the composition, um, the, you know, the depth to it, the whole sort of story aspect to it with these, uh, you know, this, this fantastic feathered uh, costume she's wearing and the, the skulls, everything just that works so well. And these little touches of colour work very well. And of course, Angel, uh, Andrea did a whole panel 
I think of these, and they're all you know really memorable images. Um, so Andrea uh, and the Valkyrie, or however you pronounce it, are a well-known um, feature on the Salon circuit. This one is by um, Phil Barber, Phil Force. I think I'm right in saying that this, will, or something very similar, was the top colour print in the print championships two years ago. Um, but, you know, really good. Apparently they're a little glass. I've always wondered how they took these, but apparently they're a little glass windows um, in the floor, if you like, of the back wall in the squash court and they're obviously lying down on the other side trying to stick the camera up against the glass and get these pictures but it works so well and you, you've seen plenty of examples i'm sure but how many have you actually spotted that this guy is completely off the ground both feet several inches off the ground he is poised and ready to strike once this guy whacks that uh, squash ball and look at the the intense you know, eyes on the ball here from, from this front player. And obviously it's all about him. He's the one with all the contrast and saturation. Uh, that's where you're meant to be looking. But, you know, when you pick up on this aspect, the fact that both feet are off the ground for this guy, you get a sense of just how good these guys are. Uh, Gone with the Wind, Joe Doyle from uh, Malahide Club in Dublin. Again, there's several examples of this sort of diagonal aspect working so well. So triangles and diagonals are always really good for um, composition. I can't remember, I, I suspect this is flash lit because there's um, a fair bit of light hitting Holly that uh, doesn't seem to be, you know, hitting anything else, etc. So I think there's probably use of flash here to light Holly's face, but Holly's just so good at, you know, playing along and looking uh, abandoned there at the bottom of this broken staircase. The Greek goddess from Jeannie Gillespie. Um, super, you know, very, another example of these talented female photographers in Photoshop. All obviously digitally created works so well the whole color palette works so well with the uh, yellow and the um, material here and the colors in the sky the this circle is something that you see quite a bit of um, um, and, you know several of Jeannie's pictures I've seen this approach and it works so well um, but uh, super uh, again I'm not yes Jeannie does enter salons but I don't think I've seen that one in, in salon competition but um, I would certainly be getting it out there if it was mine. Wow. Um, Green Parrot Snake by Alan Walker from Keswick Club in the Lake District. Um, I mean, this is just, again, uh, fabulous. The, you know, I've never, ever seen, until I saw this picture, I didn't know that snakes like this existed. But the fact that you know that all this rain is real. There's all the raindrops on the uh, on the snake. Look at the eye. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. This the uh, tongue, the movement there, and the tongue really adds to it. The uh, I mean, the green. You couldn't have made it any better if it was a digital creation. You couldn't have made it any better. The, the green background, the green snake, the green uh, little ferns here on the branch, everything just uh, is, is fabulous on that. Gilded Creatures um, by Janie Lazenby. Um, I just love this one here with the uh, the gold leaf uh, stuck to the horse. <laughs> I enjoyed hearing the story about how difficult it was to get the uh, um, the gold leaf off afterwards, etc. Probably easier to have it on the model with the uh, gold embroidered into the model's dress. I would love that hand to be pointing that way rather than that way. I would just love that wrist to break there and the hand to come up this way to sort of bring you back round up to the horse. But again, um, almost square, I think not quite square, but great background brought in here. Um, nice, just a nice amount of detail just to make the black horse stand out. If that was a dark black background, it just wouldn't work as well as it does with the um, 
sort of muted dark bluey green colours that uh, uh, have been brought into that. Another wow example of uh, underwater photography from David Keep. <laughs> I mean, these things would, I just would not be able to take the picture. I would just be um, uh, trying to get out of the out of the water and escape from the, this is I think the hammerhead uh, shark. Um, but it's just unreal to think that he was actually in there um, on the sea bottom. Um, uh, taken this picture of the, the hammerhead shark. So I'm obviously wide angle lens in quite close. So it's just, you know, frightening. Look at the teeth on that thing. Hard Times by Hugh Wilkinson. Hugh, I think, had just joined Catslate. He had just got his CPAGB <clears throat> and uh, he produced this image first, um, um, sort of more or less straight out of camera without you know much having been done to it and um, one of the things that we uh, uh we we taught and not only Hugh but obviously all newcomers to the club is how to make their images just that wee bit more three-dimensional just a wee bit of depth through dodging and burning so by the time Hugh was finished with this um it got uh 15 out of 15 in the print championships in uh, Blackburn and uh, has won many as a medal in uh, competitions since, but what a, what a face! Um, and uh, you know, you just strike. Like, I always, it's almost like Fredo's beautiful blue eyes, I and mean, it's almost you know, it's strange seeing these beautiful blue eyes on this uh, old lady with all so much character. Um, and you know, the title Hard Times, you know, you sort of get the impression of the type of life um, she, she lives, etc. But uh, I just find a sort of a contrast between the whole appearance of her and these Fredo eyes. Henry by Phil Barber. Um, sadly, I think Henry passed over the Rainbow Bridge this week. So beautiful, big. Um, um, what was it uh, New Newfoundland um, dogs um, and uh, so commiserations uh, to Phil uh, over Henry but you'll always have that picture to remember him by and I'm sure plenty others as well on your Newfie calendars but this was so clever um, you know I couldn't ever work out how it was done so I was glad to hear that Phil was you know quite open in terms of saying, you know, you know, it's a digital creation, um, and you know, but it's so well done and, and so clever. Um, he has another one of a swimmer with the same idea: the swimmer's head in the water and the arms underneath the water. But uh, I think this one is just fabulous, and um, uh, I would love to have it as a print on my wall. This one is, um, let me see, um, trying to get the title of it again, Horseplay by Linda Haney. Um, this one, again, like Laurie Campbell's and some of the other textured ones, works so much better as a print. Uh, this one was a print in the Southport exhibition uh, in the BPE in January this year with Ricky O'Neill and Terry Donnelly and myself as the three judges. And I'm fairly sure we gave a top colour print. If we didn't give a top colour print, it got second or third. But I'm fairly sure it got the, uh, the top vote. It was really well printed on a textured fine art paper. Really good control of the, the highlights and the textures just, and the whole colour scheme, it's quite a muted colour scheme, worked so well. So, um, uh, you know, as a print, it's just got to be seen as a print. Fabulous. I saw off the heart by um, John McNairn again. Uh, and again, this same idea of, you know, desaturating the skin tones. The skin tones are, you know, it's uh, almost porcelain, uh, desaturated skin tones. The play on the, the pose, um, they're sort of mirroring each other there. Um, very delicate feel to the whole thing, the nice use of texture over the background. So all, you know, throughout this, I think it just works so well. And again, I would love to see it um, in print form.
um, one by Joe Houghton, Howard. I think this was his father-in-law, he said. But quite a striking portrait. And I always remember the mantra, if you want something to look interesting, don't light all of it. So you've got this nice lit side of the face, good eye contact, uh, and then the shadow side of the face. But these Dennis Healy eyebrows, uh, and the silver hair, etc., just work so well for what is a quite a striking uh, mono portrait. I am she, she is me by Linda Haney. Uh, I loved hearing the story behind this one that this is her mother, um, and obviously this is her younger self in the uh, in the um, frame on the sideboard or coffee table or whatever. But her mum just looks so confident there and full of life um, the, her character just comes through so well and of course the title um, really sets it off if you're sitting as a judge and that title comes up you immediately get the uh, the story behind it um, so um, a really strong I think fairly well known uh, competition image I wish I'd checked by David Sadler Obviously, the guy sort of oblivious to the trains on either side of him. He's sitting listening to his music there. <clears throat> Great symmetry, obviously, to the uh, um, the actual background in the picture, and then this guy sitting in the centre. So again, you know, you can put your subject in the centre whenever you've got symmetry, and it works so well. Um, and this is probably one of David's more most successful. Um, uh, competition images. I think it was in the Master of Print, so anybody who gets a, an image into the Masters of Print, uh, really well done. Ibs by our own Gabriel O'Shaughnessy from uh, Dundalk, member of uh, Drogheda Camera Club now. Um, super desaturated skin tones here, really, I mean you're just drawn into those big eyes. Um, and I love the fact these hands are just, the fingers are just sort of peeping out of the shawl. Um, well, you know, one hand going that way, the other hand going this way. The gold jewellery to it, but really well composed. And again, you know, never be scared to cut off the tops of heads or hats or whatever, cape in this case, um, as long as you do it deliberately, obviously. But the uh, Ibs uh, has, has worked really well uh, for Gabriel, and no surprise. Icelandic horses from Chris Palmer, um, fabulous. Um, you know, this just makes me want to go to Iceland. Uh, the um, sort of evening setting sun there, putting this lovely orange light onto the uh, the two horses. But the fact that both horses' heads are visible, you don't want to have a, a picture of the the horse's butt rear end. Um, and the head pointing towards the um, mountain there. He's just fortunate that this horse has turned, nice catch light in the eye, and this horse obviously, you know, head down, getting some grass. But look at look at the beautiful light there on that uh, sand dune there by the side of the, uh, the river. Um, super picture. Wow, um, India Tonda Train Station by Stephen Hermida. Really strong, uh, you know, travel picture, I suppose. Um, I mean, again, another example of the diagonal line working so well in the picture. But these eye, the eye contact from this guy is so strong. Uh, I'm just captivated by his eyes. No matter where you move, uh, this was a print up on the wall. No matter where you move, his eyes are just locked on you. You know, he's quite sad. He, the whole, he, he's quite a sad sort of demeanour. These bloodshot eyes, the big brown eyes and the hand. You know, it almost has a play on being in a cage with these bars rather than being on a train. But I really found that quite a powerful um, portrait come, you know, travel picture. Jasmine by Bjorn Hildgard from Aalborg in uh, Denmark. Um, this model was to come to Ireland, um, but unfortunately, because of the lockdown, she never quite made it. She did make it to um, um, a ph Scottish photographer in Livingston, I saw, Barry Spence. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we'll have to hope she'll come back to Ireland in another time. But 
um, I, I've awarded this in competition somewhere. I think uh, Bill Parr and Paul Reedy and myself were judging something for um, camera clubs in Denmark, Finland and Sweden. And um, I'm fairly sure this was one of the award winners, but I've seen it in lots of catalogues um, amongst the medal winners. Lovely light. You can see here the shadow underneath the arm. So you know the light's coming from above. Uh, there's the shadow, there's the lit side of the leg, there's the shadow side of the leg. The shadow of the wooden stool is on the floor as well. So it does a really good job, this overhead light, of not lighting the wall in the background, uh, but just throwing this beautiful light over the model's uh, back and, and figure. And it's just a, a fantastic pose here. This for me was another sort of wow image. Um, Keep Off My Beach by Bill Hall from the Rolls Royce Club. I mean, if you imagine how fast these dogs are, are moving, look at all the sand, look at the paws. I mean, these dogs are moving at full pelt. You've got this fabulous expression on this dog here with the teeth uh, bared. Um, and this dog, poor dog looks as if he's a wee bit worried about what's coming. Um, and maybe they're playing, I don't know. but. The fact that Bill is obviously down on the ground here with a long lens, low angle, no perfect viewpoint, but how on earth he managed to get both dogs in focus. Bit of luck, obviously, that they ended up on the same plane, but it is pin sharp. Um, it is, there's nothing distracting about it. And whatever shutter speed he used, he absolutely nailed that picture. Um, and I, I think it's absolutely fabulous. Kirkyfell Lights, uh, Bernard Garrity um, in, uh, in Dublin. Um, he does these landscape tours, and uh, this is obviously the, the Northern Lights. I've never seen them, let alone photographed them, but I think I forget how many exposures Bernard told us this was, quite a few, but really well uh, done with the uh, fabulous colours, but yet you know, sufficient detail in the, in the rocks, the mountain and the, the water, etc. It's just a lovely mood and atmosphere to it. Ladies at Lounge by Andrea again. Um, this was, you know, obviously a digital creation with the uh, settee. I think um, Andrea told us at Cat's Light one time, I, this, you know, like this was like a flip of the, the a single chair to make it into this sort of double chair. These ladies were initially sat on the stairs or something. But again, have you noticed the figures in the frames on the background wall are these either these two ladies together or a single one? Um, they're quite desaturated and um, not as attention grabbing, obviously, as the main characters. But when you notice that, it obviously just makes it as well. The whole composition and colour scheme works so well. And the title, Ladies at Lounge, like, this is rightly so uh, a well-worn medal winner. Terry Donnelly's picture of um, Lewis Hamilton in the Formula One. I mean, this is just super. I know that he has it printed and signed up on his wall in his, in his study. Um, I'm not quite sure what this was. I just noticed this the other day when I was uh, praising it again. Um, I forgot to ask him what this was with this orange and uh, green some up, up here. But the steam coming off this uh, um, Formula One car, which had broken down, and he's clearly exiting it quite smartly. Um, it just completely adds to the atmosphere. But look at the fabulous rim light on the... Uh, uh, on the subject, and of course the great colours that he's no doubt brought out in the uh, the helmet uh, and the the, the the car itself. It's just um, a unique viewpoint, you know, looking the cemetery, looking straight down this this uh, Formula One racing car with Lewis um, exiting it is just fantastic. I mean, this image just. I take so much from this, um, and it's the sort of image that it's entirely up to you what you take out of it. Uh, it's by John Birmingham from uh, Dungarvan, down the very bottom coast of Ireland uh, near Waterford. Um, 
but uh, I forget the title. Um, what was the title of it? Uh, Life in Plastic. But the whole idea, you know, of this baby, and by the way, no babies were hurt during the making of this photograph. The baby was not wrapped in uh, cling film or cellophane. Uh, this is all digitally created, so you can, you know, see how skilled John is in Photoshop. But the whole idea behind it of, you know, babies for sale on the shelf, wrapped up, you know, like a piece of meat or something to buy. This is how you uh, you, you, you get your family in, in future times. You have to go out to Tesco's and buy your baby. Um, I just think it's it's quite a shocking image in, in, in many respects. But my goodness, once you've seen it, it is never to be forgotten. Another fabulous landscape by Colin Ross, Lusk and Tire. Uh, or Harris is it? I can't remember. Possibly Harris, but you know the fact that there the, these fabulous ridge lines acting as in the sand, acting as leading lines. The great colours in the sky, the horizon there up on the third. Uh, no sign of human involvement or life whatsoever. No footprints. Um, no you know, vehicles, planes, automobiles traffic lights, whatever, it's just uh, um, a, a super sort of minimalist uh, landscape. Lost Entire Ponies by um, um, Carol McNiven. Um, young, um, beautiful pastel colors. The uh, Detail on the horse there really makes it for me. Again, I would love to see this as a um, print on a textured paper. I just think it would be absolutely fabulous. But the fact that the colours in the sky sort of match the colours in the horse, you've got the whitish grey clouds matching the white grey horse, and then you have a wee bit of colour coming in which matches the colour in the foal. Um, I think it's just uh, fabulous, so well done, Carol. Making Friends by Pamela Wilson. The first time I saw this, I thought it was absolutely great, and uh, that view hasn't changed. But the fact, you know, you sort of think, is he going to suck this uh, poor bird up his uh, nose, uh, reaching out there towards the, the bird and this uh, grass? Uh, the baby elephant, you know, they're 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 so cute these little baby elephants, but I'm sure you still would want one to stand on you. But uh, absolutely fabulous, there, really super. Gerald appears as a subject rather than a photographer. Uh, so, Man of Mystery by Brian McClure from Catslate. Um, this one. Did well. I remember in the Scottish Salon, I think Brian <coughs> showed us that it was printed on one of the, they put sort of five or six images on the front cover of the Scottish Salon catalogue. So I'm pretty sure this one was on it. But Man of Mystery is our Gerald. Manhattan Showers by Terry Donnelly. This one was one of the first pictures that I remember seeing from Terry. Um, it was uh, it did really well in competition. I think he and I, he and I were members of a digital camera club at the time, uh, DAPA, because um, the clubs that we were in at the time had nobody to help us enter salons or exhibitions, and we knew nothing about them. So by joining this club called DAPA, uh, there were several people in there who could get us started on the competition trio. Um, <clears throat> But Manhattan um, showers, obviously very well known image. Great play on colours with the blue and orange. Blue and orange works so well in so many images. Mean left hook from Anne Given. Again, really good history for this image. It has done well for the club and well for Anne. Obviously. When you think about it, the composition is all down to Anne's skill because that doesn't come out of the camera square. Um, and she has seen where to crop it here. She's seen the fact that the square 
uh, crop will work so well with these hands reaching in. So you have the two arms, the hand, again, this arm coming in, no other distractions here. Um, this big fist right in the eye, and you can see the wee pucker of skin there where he, he has landed one on this poor guy. Uh, I think Anne told us that this guy has the reputation that he got what he deserved. Whether that's right or whether it's wrong, I don't know, I don't care, but it certainly makes for a great picture of this guy just lamping uh, this poor unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, memories, Sharon Print and Jones. I think what really makes this is not just the light on the face here, but the fact that there's a whole triangle. This girl, her pose there on the dress just makes a perfect triangle. Uh, and you've got the lit side of the face on the shadow side of the face, good catch lights in the eyes. You've got the window there as the source of light. Uh, and just enough shadow detail here on the table and on this uh, back wall, etc. Um, and I think it's just super, and again, I think it did fairly well in Southport as a digital image. Second one by Sharon called Merlin. I hadn't realised that this was the um, the guy Graham Curry until Sharon pointed it out whenever she was telling us about this picture. Uh, but now that she's told me, I can see him. I can see his face. But uh, I was thrown by the you know the the whiskers and the on the long silver hair. So I hadn't picked up on that at all. Um, really good uh, composite. Obviously, uh, the background really suits the image. There's textures, muted colours, uh, nice light coming through the. Um, this um, uh, wizard stick, uh, and of course the, the the hat, fantastic, and the eyes, just you know, plenty of space for him to be looking out into the picture there. Mountain hair and rain by uh, Julie Walker um, from Keswick. I mean, what struck me about this was the uh, this tremendous, you know. I don't know, it's like a look of surprise on this poor hare's face, as if uh, maybe Julie has just popped up out of the snow um, and caught the, the poor hare on, on a wares. But he's so pristine. He looks as if he'd just come out of the washing machine. Um, he, there is not a mark on his fur whatsoever. So whether that's because he's got, had a good shower in the, in the rain, I don't know. But for me, that's just made by the, the wind blowing his little hairs uh, of his fur and the, this almost startled expression uh, on his face. Musselden Temple by Colin Ross from Catslet Candle Club. Uh, unique viewpoint. I know I've seen lots of pictures with, I mean, this is a, obviously a cliff edge. Um, people come here and they climb over this wall and they're taking their life in their hands trying to get this viewpoint. Um, off Muslimton Temple at, at uh, sunset because you're looking out to sea, obviously. So the fact that Colin has taken this with a drone, it's a viewpoint that I hadn't really seen before. So you, this is the railway line from the train that travels from Belfast up um, to Derry, stroke London Derry. This is the um, Benone Beach, and that would be Benone Village there. But imagine the view you get on the train there as it comes right, right up around the coast. This is Missenden Temple. You can see it's built right on the edge of the cliff. Um, and there's lovely light just hitting the edge of the, uh, um, the temple. Um, and then you've got the shadow side, but a, a unique viewpoint. And it's probably quite unusual to have such a calm evening. These sort of gentle waves lapping each other, creating layers. Um, of sort of gently lapping waves and the reflection of the sky just really makes it super. My Life is Pants by Lynn Morris. <clears throat> this is just, I mean, again, very, very clever title and very, very clever and well constructed uh, image uh, from Lynn. The, uh, these are not my way fronts on the uh, line, I assure you. I think those are Lynn's pants, but um, those are definitely not my wife's. The uh, you know this big Highland coup um, with the clothesline attached and the title "My Life Is Pants" is just absolutely super. I think um, uh, Gordon Ray and Joan Ross and myself gave a top digital image when we were judging 
Dingwall a couple of years ago. Uh, Nisha by Gabriel O'Shaughnessy. Uh, another example of a diagonal aspect working well in an image. You know, you've just got that diagonal coming up there. Um, and again, this lovely desaturated skin tone that seems to work so well. I think I'm going to have to try this uh, more myself. But it's just porcelain skin there. Uh, on this uh, very pretty young girl with the hat and the little feathered brooch on it and the red cape, etc. So, Nisha, I'm fairly sure this won a medal in the, um, uh, the uh, what do you call it, Trierenberg Salon or one of those uh, big international circuits, uh, and rightly so. Um, Novice Monk by Paul Stanley from Dublin Camera Club. And again, um, lit side of the face, shadow side of the face, there's the Rembrandt triangle of light. Nice depth, you know, lovely detail, which this side lighting works so well. And of course, it's something that I use a lot, uh, whether I'm using natural light or studio light. So he's just standing ne nicely positioned on the left third. Um, this would not work if he was in the, in the center. Um, so he's nicely on the left third and uh, great light and uh, just lovely detail throughout the whole picture. Ode to Beauty by Bill Parr. Uh, Fanny Miller, obviously, in the uh, um, set in the sort of window frame of this uh, church building in, in um, uh, uh, um, what is the name of Bill's village? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, do, 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 do. forget. Um, but Bill has now taken over the ownership or uh, this sort of um, old church building uh, in his village down in, uh, um, in Cork. But th th this just frames the model so well. Uh, nice textures. I'm not sure whether those textures are added or whether it look, they look added to me, but um, there's probably some sort of texture already on the wall but I suspect that that's a little digital finishing touch, but uh, just beautiful um, muted pastel shades there and lovely light and shadow on the model. Mitzelstown, that's it, Mitzelstown is where Bill uh, lives. Old Wall um, by Paul Reedy, also from Blarney Camera Club down in Cork. I've seen this as a print um, and I, again, just works so well. I mean, what a face. If you met this guy in the street, you would just have to beg, steal or borrow, threaten, coerce, whatever you have to do to get him to stand in front of the camera. Um, I imagine he's got no teeth uh, in there and that's why he's holding those lips uh, solid shut. But look at the life in those eyes. Um, and the fact that Paul has given this some sort of vintage uh, film type background just suits the whole uh, mood of the, the portrait. Oman by Romain Nero from Luxembourg, uh, obviously taken on his travels uh, as one of the FIAP directors. But again, I just like the fact that these hands, obviously being closer to the lens, um, in close to the wide angle lens, make the hands so big. Um, he's there with his weaving cloth or whatever he's doing, the eye contact, good catch lights in the eyes, but again, nicely framed, the face framed with these big arms and hands coming out from the camera. Orangutan with Butterfly from Hugh Wilkinson. So we heard the story how there was initially a wasp there. So the wasp could hardly be seen against the fur of the uh, orangutan. So Hugh very cleverly decided to replace the wasp with the uh, blue butterfly. So not only a butterfly, but a blue butterfly. And uh, hopefully you appreciate the reason why the blue butterfly works so well with the color wheel, the blue and orange again there. And a wee bit of work done obviously in the background. Apparently I haven't been down to Dublin Zoo, but apparently this background does have a um, few distractions. So they've been basically darkened down um, to, to remove themselves uh, as distractions. But this one won award after award for, uh, for Hugh. Um, and I think it was in our World Cup winning entry for Cancelate Camera Club. How could we have a selection of the top images without one image of Fredo? 
So this is called Past Memories, again by Joan Blaze. Um, and again, I think this always works so well. The light's coming from right to left here. You've got the lit side of the face and then the shadow side of the face with the Rembrandt triangle there. Um, it always works so well, turning the head towards the light. Um, but it's just a whole, there's a lovely soft feel to this uh, image. And Joan is obviously aware that that head turns slightly further away, the nose breaks the line of the cheek. So it's perfectly composed so that you still see that bit of cheek on this, on this side of the nose and lovely eye contact or uh, eyes, you know, looking down from, from Fred out there as opposed to having direct eye contact to the camera. And I think in this case, it works really well. Whoa, we've gone from really in your face here. We've gone from the very delicate Fred out of this uh, old man, Bo uh, Pat by Bob Gibbon. Um, what a face, what a lived in face. I don't know what age this guy is, but um, I tell you what, he has been around. So in his face, F4 um, and wide angle lens, really filling the frame. So I said earlier, never be scared to crop off the top of somebody's head or hat, etc. Get those eyes up on the top third, fill the frame, wow. Um, this one uh, was uh, in Cat's Lights Palo. It was the first ever time that a club from Northern Ireland got their hands on silverware in the PAGB print championships. Whenever Cat's Light won the plate for the first time, uh, probably about seven years ago, eight years ago. And um, that was one of our images that scored 15 and was in the, the, the plate entry. Um, Peacock by uh, Michelle Legru from Malahide Club in Dublin. Uh, Michelle does a lot of these child portraits or teenage portraits, etc. But, you know, the styling of this with the blue velvet dress and obviously a bit of uh, work done on the hair and this peacock. Uh, feather positioned right over the eye works so well. Great title for this one, Plenty More Jellyfish. So obviously sort of a bridal aspect, this bride has jumped in the sea and floated to the bottom because she's been jilted at the altar and somebody's telling her, oh there's plenty more jellyfish in the sea. Um, so uh, great title and great creation by uh, Jeannie Gillespie. Power Struggle by um, Julie Walker from Keswick. Again, you know, it's remarkable, the same as Linda Haney's picture, or was it a um, uh, Luskintyre picture by um, Carol McNiven Young, where the colors of the background match the colors of the horses. So you've got the gray in the sky matching the gray horse, and you've got the golden rushes here matching the uh, uh, the colours in this horse, the white horse. Uh, so there's really only the two colours almost in the entire picture. Works so well with the texture over the sky. And again, I've judged this as a print uh, in Cumbria in the Western Area Challenge. And uh, it worked, it, it, again, for the texture to work, it needs to be as seen as a print on a textured fine art paper. And it was perfectly printed. This one is um, ba -ba -dum, uh, Quality Time by Joe Houghton um, from Dublin. Um, I mean, the light on these two uh, monkeys is just unreal. Um, it's like a dappled light almost on them, but then they've got the rim light. But it's made for me. Diagonal aspect again, obviously, works really well with the composition. But look at the face here of this... Uh, young um, chimp monkey looking up towards mum or dad, probably mum I assume. Um, it's just like a look of adoration almost. Um, it's just, I think it, it tells a lovely story. Rajasthan Water Carrier by um, Walter, um, by uh, Robert Millen um, from uh, Wigan 10. Obviously sym symmetrical background, there's perfect symmetry in the background and then of course the positioning of the subject here on the uh, right third with these fabulous colours in the uh, in the dress uh, coming down, um, you know, carrying this bowl on her head.
but the colours of that, I can just imagine that as a you know a print again on a on a matte textured paper would be fabulous. Uh, I can't remember the title for this one, unfortunately, by Terry Donnelly, but it was a well-awarded image, um, particularly in the SWPP. But Terry basically said that it's up to you what story you take out of it. Um, the story that I take out of it is obviously this man is a bit of a, a drinker. There's a clue on the floor and maybe his bride has left him. Uh, because of his drinking habits and he's standing in this you know uh, bare room threadbare room with little or nothing uh, in there and he's looking at his what would should be his own reflection in the mirror but he's seeing or imagining that he's seeing in fact his uh, beautiful bride and thinking of uh, how life could have been had he not uh, discovered a bottle of Jim Beam or whatever that is on the on the floor Now, I talk about a picture telling a story. I think this is probably one of the most perfect storytelling images uh, in terms of street uh, photography that you're going to come across. Um, it's um, called Remembrance Sunday by Paul Keane. And I just took so much from this image. The fact that, you know, these two are clearly um, in a, you know, uh, in an embrace, thinking about somebody who's died in the war, etc., somebody, one of their fathers or something. Uh, but you just get that sense that these two are, you know, comforting each other. And then you have this Egypt here with all his medals um, and his shirt coming out of his trousers, his um, trousers that are clearly three or four inches too long for him. And there's no way this guy won these medals. Uh, where he got his hands on it, he no more looks like a soldier or a military person than, than I do. Um, but the, uh, the these two old men standing here, very respectful, having a chat, etc. And this this guy sauntering past with his poppy and his medals, and so unkempt, etc. is just uh, so in contrast to obviously remembrance sundry. <clears throat> so that is a picture that really succeeds for me, not only from a compositional point of view, but from a storytelling point of view. Risk and Reward from Carol McNiven Young. Um, again, storytelling image. Great light. The light is all on the, on the subject. This is all nicely you know, subdued, not getting uh, anything like the same light as the subject here. And, you know, have you had to put the money down because you've been threatened with the gun? Or is it a case of if you steal the money, you're going to get shot, etc.? But um, this model is just French, um, Boo Colette. Um, she's just fabulous, fabulous face, but nice hard light there. Look at the depth of the shadow uh, underneath the chin. Um, again, a great sort of um, almost um, film noir style uh, image. Roma by Paul Hanley. Um, you know, the luck that he has with this lady walking past with the yellow dress on um, this train stop with not only a yellow train, but Roma um, graffitied onto the, the train was just uh, um, right place, right time. Sin and Surfer by Bill Hall. So, I mean, this just defies gravity. How, on earth, how would you not just fall off the bloody board here? He is completely sideways. His bottom's virtually in the water. Um, so it's obviously the speed that he's traveling at uh, is keeping him attached to the board. But, you know, so if you get that sense of how fast he must be traveling to stay in that position, um, and, you know, all the waves splashing up, etc. here, Again, <coughs> nicely on the left third, so you can see where he's travelled from along this wave. And he's just, you know, perfectly lit there on the, uh, the crest of that wave. I think it's a really strong sports image. Shall we dance, Janie Lazenby? So back to the horsey theme. And I love this, the fact that the bent um, leg of the horse mimics the bent arm of the uh, ballerina here. So you just get a sense of the grace of this horse. You know, they're such powerful big animals and yet you get this fantastic sense of grace 
um, almost ballet from the from the horse itself. So a well known image that has done well in competition. Another one from uh, Michelle Legrue, slam dunk. So if you imagine the this picture without the use of the flash, the camera would expose not only for the subject but for the whole background. So what Michelle has very cleverly done here is use um, off-camera flash uh, from left and right to really light up this subject um, and to allow her to underexpose the background. So it's all about this subject being lit to stand out um, as she leaps up to slam dunk the uh, basket into the, the basketball into the hoop. Really, really, you know, it, it wouldn't be half the picture if um, the the detail was all apparent in the background here because it's, you know, probably a typical gym somewhere, um, but you don't see it. It's all about the, uh, the subject and the way it's been lit. Spitsberg and Blue by Anne Given. So uh, Bob and Anne were very lucky to go out on a cruise, I think it was, um, uh, and capture these fantastic um, um, icy landscapes. But there's a great, again, a great sort of depth of layers here. You have the water, the ice, and then this uh, uh, land here, the mountain, the mist and the clouds, etc. So there's great depth right throughout that picture, which I think makes it. Stairway from Heaven by Bjorn Hildegard from Malborg again. Again, I've awarded this in uh, salons uh, and seen it in loads of catalogues. There's great, the whole composition, she's exactly in the right spot. Again, we've got this lit side of the face, the Rembrandt triangle, just beautiful side lighting coming in there on the model. Great detail throughout all this. And then of course you have just enough detail in all this there's a sort of a um, symmetrical aspect to the, this uh, opening and this opening with nice detail in the, in the top. It just works. It's just one of those images that just absolutely works. Reef Pano. Um, so after hearing from Bernard last week uh, about his trip to Tenerife, um, I've gone and booked myself. So I put this one in because I uh, hope to be able to take this one this time next year. So May 2021, uh, I'm going to Tenerife with um, with uh, Bernard to shoot the astrophotography in Tenerife, um, all inclusive apparently. So we'll be well fed and watered. I'm going out at night to shoot these uh, uh, astro pictures. Another really powerful sort of contemporary aspect because of the lockdown from uh, John Birmingham, uh, the family that breathed together. So, I mean, how on earth he thought of this prior to the, you know, this was created long before COVID was ever heard of. Um, so John's of mind obviously working over time, thinking of the apocalyptic type future and all this with the, the, the face masks and the, uh, these canisters on the plates, etc., and you know this this pipe coming into the wall, whether it's piping air in, etc., who knows? This is meant to be the idea, but fabulous um, composition, you know, this semicircle of, of the family um, and the, the the strong red, desaturated, and everything else. It just is a fabulous image. Another wow image from uh, Tim Pyle. Uh, hallway table of Lulu. Uh, I mean, I, I remember Tim telling me how he takes these with the camera. He's now got a drone, but I don't think this is drone. I think this is just the camera on the end of an extended pole held at a 45 degree angle with the camera at 45 degrees. So in other words, the camera's looking straight down. But I mean, the whole symmetry of that um, floor mat um, the positioning of the table, I mean, Tim would have gone out of his way to make sure that was absolutely perfectly positioned on that floor. And then Lulu positions herself on top of it. I mean, it's just uh, fantastic. Um, the Killing Joke by Dean Irvine. So this is the sort of comedy, uh, comical 
um, cosplay picture that Dean loves to create. And uh, I know one of the local judges in Northern Ireland was really quite taken with this when he was judging in the club and says he still has nightmares over this uh, um, figure, the killing joke coming after him <coughs> to clobber him with the, the baseball bat. Uh, the Library by Les Forrester. Um, this is uh, Dusseldorf, he said, somewhere in Germany anyway. Um, the Library. And Paul Hanley showed, I think, quite a similar picture, but obviously uh, wide angle lens and uh, it's quite a unique uh, building. So, good example of the architectural approach. Um, the Walk by Joe Doyle. I know a lot of judges who might say, uh, uh, particularly local judges, who might say, Oh, has he been put in? And they would start to argue amongst themselves whether the figure had been put in and forget to look at the picture. Who cares whether he's been put in or not? And in fact, he hasn't been put in. He's, he really is there, but he works so well, that solitary figure. Uh, and of course, being so small, the sense of scale, um, I can just imagine a lot of our local judges with a small J, um, you know, just basically getting totally wound up as to whether he's put in or whether he's not and failing to see the whole picture. Um, you know, I think that is absolutely fabulous. I remember it in Joe's A panel in the Irish Photographic Federation. Um, and I just think it's absolutely super. So well done, Joe. Three-toed sloth, Pamela Wilson again. This again was one of our recent cat slide images. Uh, and hasn't got out very far other than local competition. But again, I just love the composition of this with the uh, triangle created there by the outstretched arms of the sloth, great eye contact. And again, that fact that there's not very many competing colors in it. Um, it's just uh, great. I've never seen one uh, in real life, so I'm not sure where Pamela photographed this thing, but um, remarkable uh, creature. Through the Window, um, third one by Lynn Morris. Um, so it's not just the fact that she's so good at creating, um, you know, digital composites, etc. Uh, you know, I suspect this is a composite and not the window. The, the child was not photographed on the other side of the window, right? but I don't know. Um, but it works so well. Um, this portrait of the, 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 the girl and her expression, again, is quite a it makes for quite a storytelling image. <coughs> You're wondering, you know, is she seeking help? The fact that there's all these cobwebs, um, you're thinking it's not her home. Uh, has she been locked up in here? Uh, is she trying to get your attention, etc.? She's got quite a worried look on her face, but I think that one works really well. Another one from uh, Paul Keane, told you not to talk to that actress. <laughs> Very clever title. But I'm just sort of wondering, is this priest giving us, giving the fingers here? Is there some sort of, is he getting ready to uh, <laughs> uh, give this uh, uh, mother superior as good as he's getting? But I mean, this is quite a unique capture to, to come across, her pointing the finger right in the face of the, uh, the local priest. Um, and you're wondering what on earth has he done to warrant him telling her telling him off? Um, or is she just one of these bossy nuns who uh, uh, always you know, points the finger in everybody's face, etc. But again, you take from it what you see in it, uh, a storytelling image. Tom O'Donnell by Paul Stanley. So you know, there's quite an Irish feel to this, obviously with the, um, the pub, um, the old man in the pub with his pint of Guinness and uh, all the, uh, the you know the weathered face. I'm sure he's uh, uh, sunk many's a, a pint of Guinness in his time. And again, this great lit side of the face and shadow side of the face. So um, side lighting again working its best. Waiting for the hobby, um, Claude Tomaldi um, from Dundalk. Um, this just works so well in terms of the. You know, being a composite, the background just works so well with the styling of the figures. Um, it really helps sell the, the story. Again, good use of, of textures. Um, strong, I like the strong colour in the red on his uh, bow tie. 
and the blue on uh, these what would you call them pantaloons or whatever but um, the fact that she's looking over there towards him and he's like the you know um, the lord of the manor or whatever but uh, I think that one works really well Wet Jumper by Bob Given. This one just, you know, I, I thought it was fantastic the first time I saw it as a black and white print. It really jumps off the, uh, off the paper. It's printed on a burrito paper and um, it really gives it a beautiful deep black um, and the highlights just, you know, come across as, you know, the, the cream on the pint of Guinness. It's just uh, super. Um, the high shutter speed has obviously uh, frozen the raindrops as much as it has frozen him, but the, the composition of him coming over the bar, the arms outstretched, the drama of the background works really well. Who's Next by uh, Brendan Tomaby from Dundalk. Uh, I've seen this as a print. Um, it looks a wee bit low contrast here on this figure, but it's printed I remember the print being printed a wee bit heavier than that, a wee bit more contrast, and it made for a fabulous print in his, um, I think it was his, I can't remember if it was an L panel or an A panel, but um, his panel, whichever it was, was one of the standout panels on the day. But the uh, um, the story here, who's next? You know, this, this weathered old face with the whiskers and the hair, um, standing next to the coffin, who's next? And you're wondering, is he next in it? Um, but I used to tease old people that I used to play golf with by calling them coffin dodgers. And um, this would, I, the, the title coffin dodger is uh, crying out for me for, for this one. And last couple. Um, whose idea was it to shelter here anyway? Um, by uh, Alan Walker. Uh, so we commented on this one last week. I just love the comical aspect of these, the two little owls underneath, taking shelter under this big leaf and again the rain. So it reminds me obviously of the snake image, the, the fact that there's so much green going on and the rain obviously as well, but um, a really strong storytelling image. Um, the fact that this leaf does not actually come in contact with the birds and cut them off makes it if they were partly hidden behind that leaf um, it wouldn't be half the, the picture. Last one is Wuthering Heights by Janie Lazenby and uh, I think I commented last week how I really liked the fact that the colours in the sky again match the pickup on the sort of um, uh, maroony colours, magenta colours in this rose and in the, uh, the garment. Uh, really well done composite. Uh, again, the lit side of the face and the shadow side of the face, um, the nice light over the mountains in the background, etc. Wuthering Heights, great title. It just absolutely um, matches the, the picture that uh, uh, Jamie has created. So folks, those are the 100 images that I have selected from absolutely everybody. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing at this stage and um, unmute everybody and I'm going to take a five minute break and then what I have, I selected a maximum of one image um, from 25 people. So the next step is to show you the top 25 before then showing you what in, in my, um, uh, to my eye were the top 10. So I think Hopefully you all agree, you've seen a heck of a collection of 100 images there from photographers all over the UK and Ireland and further afield. Um, and trust me, the top 25 um, will uh, uh, really are the cream of the crop, never mind the, the top 10. It was a heck of a job to try and whittle the 25 down to 10, but um, I managed it. Some of them were in, some of them were out, some of them were in and some of them were out. But um, I'm looking forward to showing you my final selection in five minutes. So if you want to have a chat or recharge your glass or um, go to sleep for five minutes, whatever, I will uh, pause the recording.